Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jakos. Today, I'll be doing Roberts Chapter 26, Disease Classification, the Syphilitic Stigma. Well, the venereal stigmata, or as Hanneman called, it, called them the miasms, they are fundamentally infectious of a specific nature. So all the, basically all the miasms are infectious. Each one has its own peculiarity or specific nature. It's important to understand properly the basis of all infection and of all the chronic disease. So hence, if you want to be successful in practice, it is important for everybody to understand the basis of the infection, how the infection occurs, why it occurs, and, and of all the chronic diseases. This is necessary as then only we can properly understand the working of the stigmatic disease. So why is this necessary? Because if we want to understand in depth the correct or the exact working of the stigmatic diseases, that is the miasms, we have to understand properly the miasms and the chronic disease. Let us consider syphilis for instance. This is one of the comparatively modern diseases and it is the basis of many constitutional troubles. So syphilis itself is a modern disease and it has many constitutional troubles. Syphilis is supposed to be contracted from an impure cohesion. The mental attitude of an individual is violated and there is the very inception of the disease and the vitality is low. So, why does syphilis occur? Because Robert says that the mental attitude of the individual is violated. And as a result of which, he goes into a bad practice or a bad behavior and he gets exposed to syphilis. In other words, the vital energy is, is attempting to push out the enemy. So what happens once he contracts syphilis? The vital force or the vital energy tries to push out the enemy. As long as this shanker remains on the surface as an expression of the internal turmoil, no constitution symptoms will appear. So once the person is affected with syphilis, naturally the shanker will be there and the vital energy will try to push out the enemy and it is seen in the form of the shanker on the surface. As, and this shanker is nothing but an expression of the internal turmoil or the inward turmoil. So whatever is turmoil, whatever uh, uh, what a disequilibrium is occurring internally in the body, the vital force tries to throw it out in order to conserve the life of the individual. And out here, as long as the shanker remains on the surface, please remember, no constitutional symptoms will appear. Now this state, it lasts for months or even years, provided it is not suppressed. So this is very important, provided it is not suppressed. So please remember, this state of the shanker will last for months or even years, provided there is no suppression taking place. This is very important. The general treatment among physicians is to cauterize or treat locally the manifestation. So the general treatment among the physicians is what? Either you cauterize the shanker or treat it locally and make it disappear. So such treatment immediately dries the shanker and throws the poison back. So what happens when you cauterize the shanker or you apply some local applications? The shanker dries up and the poison is thrown back into the system by suppression, into the innermost recesses of the system. So then a chain of symptoms begin to develop, showing that the vital energy is profoundly disturbed and that it is helpless to cope unaided with the enemy. So what happens when the suppression takes place, the shanker disappears and the poison is thrown back internally into the system and the vital organs are affected or the different systems in the body are affected. And the individual or the, or the, yes, and the individual gets helpless to cope up with the enemy. Usually the next step taken by nature is to produce an eruption on the body. So what is the next step taken by nature is the to throw out the eruptions on the body, that is the syphilitic eruptions. If this manifestation is in turn treated by suppressive measures, the disease attacks the internal organs. So what happens? So if these skin manifestations are again suppressed, 
then the disease will attack the internal organs. It always attacks a part of the organism which is weak. So naturally, it will attack those system or those internal organs which are weak. It may be the central nervous system, arterial system and the heart, or it may be the liver or the intestinal tract. So this is a few examples Robert has given. So first, when you're exposed to syphilis, the chancre is there. If left unaided, it will last for months or even years, provided no suppression takes place. If suppression takes place, then you get internal manifestations and the body, in order to preserve all the vital force, in order to preserve life, throws it out in the form of the syphilitic skin symptoms. Again, if suppression takes place, then definitely the internal organs are affected. For example, the central nervous system, the severe system, and so on and so forth. Any of any or all of the tissues of the body may be affected. So Robert says that not only the important systems, but any part of the body or any tissue of the body or any organ of the body may be affected. These manifestations may be suppressed in one place after another and later on are ready to develop in some new manifestations at the most tribal provocation. So what happens when the internal organs are affected because of suppression? The chain of symptoms develop and some new manifestations occur. And these new manifestations occur because of the cycle of the slight tribal provocation. Now, what is this provocation? Either grief, sorrow, worry, they are potent influences to develop these manifestations. So these are the exciting causes which will trigger off the myasa. Or it may be exposed to the elements, a slight, a slight accident, stress or business relationship, or any other cause that starts irritation and maintains the disease. Or it could be any, or it could be besides these causes of grief, sorrow, and worry, other causes could be also exposure to the sun, the wind, the rain, or slight accident, stress or business, etc. Until this is met by the art of the similar antiseptic remedy, he passes his day in discomfort and distress and comes to a premature old age. So Robert says that if this is not treated, then the discomfort will go on increasing, the distress will go on increasing, and the patient will have a premature old look or an old age will develop soon. But this can be avoided if you can give the similar antisyphilitic remedy. This stigma has effect upon the offspring shown the effect in many ways. So this stigma also has the effect upon the offsprings. When the offspring is affected with the syphilitic taint, he will not show the direct effect in the primary chancre or ulcer. So when the offsprings are affected, there will not be there will not be a taint of either the primary chancre or the ulcer. But what will happen? As time goes by, the disease has passed into second generation, the fault has become thoroughly glued to the life force, and it becomes a part of his being. So what happens? It goes into second it goes into the second generation and the fault becomes glued to the life force. This results in many constitutional tendencies such as deformities, chronic catarrhal conditions of the nose and throat, malformation of the teeth and of the bony structure, ulcers and many other manifestations are seen. So what will happen? The, the poison gets or the, or the myosin gets glued to the, life to the life force and many other constitutional tendencies will Will, uh, will be manifested or will be seen in the form of congenital deformities, chronic cata, malformation, bony structures, ulcers, etc. This is thus in the second generation, we find none of the primary local manifestations. This is because the manifestations have changed their character, showing that the economy is thoroughly embedded with the deadening and destructive effect of the stigma. So the second generation, we find no, pri no primary local manifestations, and this is because the economy is embedded with the destructive effect of the syphilitic stigma. In the primary disturbance, we may find that the infection of syphilis becomes grafted onto a soric base. So in the primary disturbance, it may, it may be that the syphilitic miasm may be grafted onto a soric base. Here we have a complication of troubles requiring great patience and skill to solve. So if the base is soric and on top of that it is, it is engrafted the syphilitic miasm, then it becomes difficult to treat. Usually in this union of sora and syphilis, the soric symptoms predominate. So when there's a combination of sora and syphilis, 
the psoric symptoms will predominate. Thus, the predominant symptoms of sora must be treated first with the antisoric similar. So whatever is dominant, you have to treat that first. So in this case, the psoric symptoms predominate. So you have to treat that first with the appropriate antisoric similar. After the patient responds to the remedy and the psoric condition is largely obliterated, we must then go for the syphilitic dyscrasia, which will now show itself and become prominent. So after you're given the antisoric medicine, the psoric condition or psoric symptoms will subside and then the syphilitic symptoms or the syphilitic dyscrasia will be become more prominent. Thus, an antisyphilitic sibilimum or the remedy that's most similar and, that, and adapted to syphilitic symptoms should be taken into consideration. So naturally now, the syphilitic dyscrasia is more prominent after this, after the psoric symptoms have subsided, then you have to go to the, then you have to go to the antisyphilitic similar. And whatever symptoms are there, you have to find the remedy according to that. The patient who is suffering from syphilis in the latent state or who manifests the inherited stigma will present a picture that is very easy to recognize, and that is probably the earliest, man, uh, the easiest of the myism or stigma to treat. So when the patient who is suffering from the syphilis in the latent state or who manifests the inherited stigma will present the picture very easily to recognize. So when the syphilis is in the latent stage, it is quite simple to treat because it is simple to recognize the symptoms. Patients with inherited or latent syphilis are mentally dull, heavy, stupid, and especially stubborn sullen, morose, and usually suspicious. So Roberts gives us the latent symptoms of, of syphilis on the mental plane. Patients are dull, stupid, heavily um, stupid, then they are stubborn, morose, and suspicious. They are always depressed, but in the depression, they will keep their troubles to themselves and they will sulk over them. These are the people who develop fixed ideas who are not eradicated by any amount of explanation or talk. So the latent symptoms of the syphilitic myism on the mental plane will be fixed ideas and no amount of explanation will remove these fixed ideas. Their mental power are shown in reaction. They become melancholy and they condemn themselves. They like to be alone, yet desire to escape from themselves as well as from others. In their slowness of comprehension, they forget what they are about to say and they find it hard to get back to the track of their conversation. So now the, the latent symptoms on the memory. So lack like slow of comprehension, they forget what they're about to say, again, find the difficult to get the thread of the conversation and track their conversation. If they are reading, they read a few lines and then they must reread it to comprehend it again. So if they're reading, they read a few lines and again, they have to read the few lines because they forget what they have read because of the poor memory or because of the dullness of the memory. They are always worse at night. All symptoms develop more after the sun goes down. So in the stipulated stigma, the patients are always worse or aggravated at the night time. That means from sunset to sunrise, they are aggravated and they feel better in the daytime. So please remember all the modalities of the syphilitic miasm are exactly that opposite of that of psoric miasm. There is oppression, restlessness, and anxiety at night. Restlessness is so great that it drives them out of the bed. So this night aggravation is seen in the form of restlessness, anxiety, which drives them out of the bed at night. So that's all. The second part will be coming up soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your patient listening.